My name's Al Sterling. I'm here with Ollie Wilkinson, who will shortly be swimming the English Channel. So how um, does it feel to actually hear me say that, you swim the English Channel? Uh, it's getting quite close now, so there is a sort of a, a level of apprehension and excitement. Um, potentially, or hopefully, I'll be swimming the next two weeks. So um, I'm, I'm desperately looking forward to doing it, pretty scared about it, and, uh, and hope that I can get across in a reasonable time. Okay, reasonable time. How um, long do they give you? You can take as long as you want. Um, some people swim for over 20 hours to swim across the English Channel. The average is about 13 and a half. Really? Um, I would hope to do it in, in a little under 10 hours, but it depends on the conditions on the day. 10 hours is still a lot. That's more than a working day. I know. <laughs> I know. I'd, yes, I'd probably prefer to be at work. But, um. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, obviously you do a lot of training in preparation for this. Yep. Whereabouts do you train how often? Uh, in Cheltenham, I mostly train at the outdoor pool here, the Sanford Lido. Um, and I train for once or twice a day, about 50 kilometres a week. Um, but I also train down in Dover every few weekends, down in the harbour, and occasionally in the lakes near here as well. Okay, so you're quite into your outdoor swimming, I take it. Well, it's all about, yes, it's all about outdoor swimming and training for the, for the channel. The pools, the indoor pools are too warm, really. The channel temperature at the moment is about 18 degrees, and a lot of indoor swimming pools are as warm as 28 or 30 degrees. So I have to do as much cold water swimming as I can. Okay, so it's all in preparation, just getting yourself used to temperatures and the environment and everything. So um, how long have you been swimming for? Oh, I've swum since I was um, probably sort of four or five years of age um, and I've done sort of competitive swimming since I was not much older than that. So. Okay, so you've been doing it for a while then? I have been, although I've never tackled anything of this sort of um, magnitude before. So I, I started doing sort of serious training for the channel at the start of the year, at the end of last year. Okay, so obviously it's no secret to anyone that's watching that obviously you've got an Australian accent, you're obviously not, f well, not from the UK. Um, how big is it in Australia? Uh, swimming is, is highly respected in Australia. It's a, it's a big sport and um, it always gets covered well on the Olympics and the World Championships on TV. Um, and long distance swimming um, has been a bit of a sort of an Australian specialty. We've had uh, 1,500 metre swimmers who won the Olympics for the last 20 years or so. Um, Des Renford is a, an Australian who's famous for swimming the English Channel 19 times. Really? And uh, he was known as the King of the Channel for quite a long time before uh, um, uh, Mike Reid, who, uh, who, who beat his record. So these 10-hour swims, do you not get hungry or thirsty? Yes, you do, and you, you have to eat and drink as you swim. Um, when you do the channel, there, there is a support boat next to you the whole way, and they hand you uh, drinks as you go along. You drink energy drinks every half an hour or so, and you eat sort of, um, depending on what you can stomach, bananas or tin fruit, these sort of things. Okay, so not like McDonald's or anything? No, no <laughs> hamburgers. Um, it's, it's quite tricky in the salt water to digest and to keep food down as well, so it's a, it's a balance between sort of keeping your energy up and not making yourself too sick. But you need to keep your sort of hydration up and your energy up in these swims. That's understandable. So do you not stop, or do you literally stop for a couple of seconds? And you, You're not allowed to stop and touch the boat at any time, so you have to stay in the water. So they hand you from the boat, literally hand you a cup of, of energy drink, or they throw you a bottle with some energy fluid in it, and then you just drink from that as you go along. Okay, and as for the bananas, do you peel them yourself? <laughs> oh, they, they, they usually will sort of peel bananas or if, if you have tin fruit, which is sort of easier to eat, they'll put them into a cup and you'll just tip them down the back of your, your throat as you're swimming. Yeah, <laughs> sounds nice. <laughs> so um, I understand that you've got a couple of charities helping you, helping out or funding you. Uh, no, I'm, I'm fundraising for a couple of charities oh, right. to do the, um, doing the channel swim. I'm trying to raise some money for um, Pancreatic Cancer UK. Um, my father-in-law was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer last year and um, so I was inspired to try and raise some money for, for pancreatic cancer and also for the Sanford Lido which is the outdoor swimming pool in Cheltenham um, which is a great facility for the locals and uh, has struggled for a long time to um, support itself so I'm trying to raise some money for that as well. So that's good so you're obviously giving something back to the community and obviously raising money for something that's close to your heart. Um, so for anyone else that's maybe young or maybe has been swimming for a long time, what advice would you give them to maybe get into this, maybe if they want to do it short term or maybe a career out of it? Any advice? Oh, look, swimming's a wonderful sport. It's, it's um, very good for you. It's good on the joints and anyone can, can do it. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for people who want to go further with it and, and get involved with, with races in the pool or... There's lots of um, open water swimming races now in the lakes and there's a, 
a famous one in Lake Windermere now, the Great North Swim, which is, um, I suppose, a little bit like the Great North Run. And that's a mile swim in Lake Windermere every September. Uh, so there's more and more uh, opportunities for people who want to do some races or do a bit of swimming in the outdoors as well. Okay, so for these people, would they maybe have to change um, any of their diet plans or anything? Is there any particular regime that you stick to to maybe keep in shape in preparation for these swims? Well, I, I um, my sort of situation, I suppose, or when you're doing a, a channel swim is you do need to have a little bit of, of insulation on you because the, the water is so cold. Um, and if you're in the water for nine or ten hours, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's quite a challenge to sort of make sure you've got enough uh, condition to sort of keep you going for that length of time. If you're too skinny, you'll get too cold. Um, and it's a balance. The bigger you are, the more weight you pull through the water. So I have been eating a lot of sort of high energy, high fat foods in the last six months to put a bit of uh, weight on. Um, but for most people, you know, I think it's sort of a matter of being, being healthy and doing a bit of outdoor sport. And um, if you're doing uh, the Great North Swim, then you're allowed to wear a wetsuit, whereas I'm not in the channel. So uh, oh. that's a bit of a, an advantage as well. Okay, so nothing but speedos, goggles and swim hat. That's right. In the channel, you're only allowed to wear your speedos, one hat and one pair of goggles and, um, and as much channel grease as you can lather on. Yeah, so you can't double up. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so um, is there anywhere that anyone can catch you on maybe Facebook or MySpace? I have a, a blog, um, which is following my progress. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it's www.ollychannelswim2009.blogspot.com. And there's some links there to the charity sites, some Just Giving sites to fundraise. Okay, okay well, thank you very much for your time, Ollie. My name's Al Sterling, thank you, and good night.